Hello, Tom Lebecki here with the latest edition of the New Theory Podcast, and we are continuing. I think we're on part six, or part seven, part six of the John Panisi interview series. Today, we're going to focus in on the Garden State, my home state, is the New Jersey live and well, is, sorry, is a mob in New Jersey alive and well. And we're going to talk a little bit about a beating in exchange for a wedding. John Panisi, welcome back to the New Theory Podcast. How are you doing today? Doing good, Tom. How are you? Okay. So we're talking a little bit about a, a beating in exchange for a wedding. So first, let's talk about your former colleague. Uh, talk us a little bit about Johnny Perna and who he is. Johnny Perna was uh, part of the Jersey faction with the Lucchese's, um, along with his father, Ralphie, and his brother, Joey, they were all friends. The father, Ralphie, was at one time a capo regime with the Jersey faction. Okay. So, you talked a little bit about it before, but you, as a Staten Island guy, as a Lucchese crime member guy, you were pretty juiced in to New Jersey and, and, you know, we're going as early as, or late as a few years ago, um, offhand, you know, we don't got to be exact. How many, how many guys still, still kind of had their butt in New Jersey about three years ago that were, that were in your Bogota roughly? There's a bunch of, there's a crew out there. So there's a bunch of them. Um, uh, you know, I don't know if you know the history or not, but, um, you have the Pernas and the Tessettas. Yeah. And, and these guys were like the Hatf Hatfields and McCoys at one time. They, they didn't really get along that great. They were cousins, but, you know, they are family. And um, there's a bunch of them out there. I, I, the number I don't know, but there's, there's, a, there's quite a few of them out there in Jersey. There's a, there's a Jersey faction, you know, called the Jersey crew. Nice. Okay. So this brings us to um, the, the Real Housewives of New Jersey. And a gentleman by the name of Thomas Manzo, Tommy Manzo, who's in Franklin Lakes, New Jersey. Um, he he knows um, Mr. Perna, and yes. I understand that um, you know he owns the Brownstone, which is um, uh, he's a, he's yeah he's a uh, he's a partner with with his brother in, in the business. The father had the business before them, and and the father I understand, and I'm not inferring it was mob related but he ended up in a trunk and he was pretty right. close to a, a gentleman by last name of he was hooked up with the genovese so, so i know this is way before your time but yes my, yeah i don't yeah i didn't i i i didn't know anything about that but i had heard about it yeah okay so so maybe a tinge of the mob related to the real housewives of new, of new jersey mm -hmm. and so uh mr manzo uh, uh, allegedly um reach out to Mr. Perna because he was a little pissed off about his ex-wife, who, you know, picture there, beautiful, very attractive, was dating yep. Mr. Canton. Yes. And uh, your understanding, what happened next? He, so how it, uh, what, what had happened was, was that I went to the wedding. I didn't know anything about this. And um, it was an extravagant wedding and the cocktail hour was like soup to nuts and um one of the better ones that i've been to so i had turned to joey perna and and said you know i said i, I gotta tell you this is this is some wedding you know they really did a good job and yeah. they have everything so you know he turned around and he says what do you think my what do you think this my brother went for what do you think this cost my brother I said, I don't know, 100, 150,000. He says, try nothing, zero. Yikes. You know, and uh, I, I, so I looked at him. I says, so when he said that, you know, what was going through my mind was probably that, you know, either the guy was with, the guy that had the place was with him, or maybe it was pushing up and shaking the guy down, something like that. But so anyway, he starts to tell me this story. And <laughs> I was just shaking my head when I heard the story because I never expected him to say that. Yeah. And, you know, he explained that, you know, who the guy was, because I didn't know who had the place and um, and who the guys. I don't know if they were divorced back then or they were separated, something like that. Yeah. And that she was now dating this guy. And um, 
you know, he, he, he told Johnny that he wanted the guy lumped up. And um, so he, so he said that he said, my brother and, and a couple of these kids from Jersey that's around him, they went and caught the guy and gave him a lumping. And he says, and you know, <laughs> he didn't pay nothing for the wedding. Wow. I said, Holy shit. Um, and, um, and then he said, could you imagine what he's going to make out? You know, it didn't cost him a dime here. You get these envelopes. So it's, you know, it's all money that he, he made. He didn't, he didn't have to pay for anything. Interesting. So, so I'm just going by our previous conversations and I know people have been listening pretty religiously and you as, you know, a made member, uh, and I'm guessing, uh, uh, Johnny was a made member as well. Right? John was, yeah, Johnny was a friend. John was a friend. Okay. So I, I'm just, just going by what you said earlier is a friend generally doesn't get their hands dirty as much. They, you know, they outsource it or have an associate or somebody really looking to maybe gain favor. Why do you think he did it himself? I mean, listen, sometimes you do go, you know what I mean? Sometimes okay. you go, you know, sometimes you go, in his case, he he knew what his reward was. He wanted to make sure it gets done too. <laughs> you know what I mean? He wanted the wedding. <laughs> so, um, you know, not necessarily all the time will you go, but, you know, maybe you'll send guys to go, but sometimes you'll go. You know, a friend will go, you know, he'll go on whatever it is that needs to get done. And Johnny went. So this part I don't know. So did Mr. Canton, you know, got beat up and, you know, you know, I don't, you know, with all the respect, guy comes up, beats you up, you know, looking at him, probably looks like an Italian American gentleman. It's not random. So maybe it might be mob, mob tinged. Um, it's no secret that the Manzos may have tangentially had relations, um, you know, you know, with the mob. Um, so, did, did, did they run to the feds or the cops? Or I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't know the answer. I, from the way it took place, I don't think so. I don't think okay. that, I don't think it went down like that. Okay. I don't think, I don't think that they did. All right. So I want to hear more about the wedding. <laughs> uh, <so laughs> DJ Band talked to us. That was well, no, the, I can tell you why a, a lot. A lot of our uh, Borgata was there. Administration was there. Um, some guys from the West Side uh, were there. No Philly guy. Oh, no. Well, that's not true. Uh, uh, um, matter of fact, it's good that I bring them up. Um, on the last one, we mentioned um, when we spoke about Philly, I miss. Uh, I said the wrong name. It, it, that Scoops Lakata. I said Anthony. Uh, Anthony is a, uh, Anthony Lacata is a friend with the Campinos. I mixed them up, but I guess his name is Joe. I was introduced to him as Scoops, but I, I had met him at that at that wedding. Uh, uh, Scoops Lacata, that's that's what the Philly mob. So he was there. There was a guy from Philly there. A um, lot of people, maybe maybe over three three hundred fifty people at that wedding, and um, and. The wife, which a lot of people don't know, was pregnant. So this was kind of a, you know, get married quick. And he, they were also getting ready to go in, you know, on, on the gambling case. So um, it, it was a big, big wedding. Okay. Um, so, but hold on. So, so I'm just, you know, remember, like, I thought the days of, like, the big mob weddings, the feds are outside. Uh, God knows you can't consort with other criminals, social media, the whole bit. Like, I kind of thought, like, do they like, was social media banned? Like, they phones outside? Like, I'm just guessing, let's say there's 20 friends, 30 friends, 40 friends, whatever. I mm -hmm. thought the day of like, those kind of gatherings were done. So are they more, are they more common than we think? Or was this yes. like an exception? Yes that that's a common that's a common um get together and 
and um no there was nothing about banning cameras or there was nobody breaking <laughs> there's nobody breaking the photographer's camera <laughs> like that there was, none, there was none of that <laughs> there was none of that all right um gotta ask this john mm -hmm. how much was in la boost like how much how much you give uh, something like that uh uh to like you know maybe not just exactly you but what type, what type of money does does it made I mean, I would say that, I would say that, you know, for a guy, probably 500 to a thousand in the envelope. Um, Sounds about you know, right. Yeah, that's about right. It was nothing crazy. I mean, people probably gave more. It depends on who it was, you know, like I said, our administration was there. Um, I, I actually bumped, walked right in with them because we pulled up at the same time. Uh, it was Maddie. Maddie, uh, Stevie, Joe Napoli, and Richie DeLuca is a cap regime uh, with us. And um, we actually all walked in together. And um, the person that was with me, uh, they were teasing, teasing me saying, you know, Oh, nice looking, nice looking, nice looking woman. What's she doing with you? <laughs> and uh, as a matter of fact, she had like a white and black dress. And the she told me, you see a look that she gave me? Because the, the, the wife kind of gave her a look because, you know, a lot of times that you're not supposed to wear white to the wedding. Yeah. Even, like you show up the bride or whatever it is. It really wasn't a white dress. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we, I mean, it was a, it was a really nice wedding. You know, the guy threw him a nice, wedding. you know, like I said in the blog, he's probably very appreciative of uh, the, the beating already took place. Interesting. So um, one thing I like about you, John, is that you, you don't talk about things you don't know about, but their house was burglarized, I want to say three or five years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was believed that that may have been mob related as well. Can you speak to any of that, or is that I yeah I don't like I I don't know about that part. I I heard about that part and read you know what I read, but I I don't know anything about that. You know, if 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 it was you know um, a part two, you know, if 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 it was a, a second beating or to make it look like a home invasion and give them another beating. I, I don't know, you know, I know what I read, but I, I don't know anything firsthand about that. Interesting. So we kind of talked about this before. So this is, you know, so is this a favor for a friend and he hooked them up or is this more of a rent a wise guy thing, do you think? I, I believe it was rent a wise guy. You know, he, he knew who Johnny Perna was and went you know he obviously knew he was looking to have the wedding and it was a, a perfect opportunity for him to ask for his favor in exchange for the wedding and i think that's the way it took place i don't think he just as a friend and i don't mean i don't mean because an Oscar friend i mean just knowing johnny went and said hey do me a favor i think it was just that he went to him and the opportunity was right right timing for him you know and it, you know, he got it done. So, so we know the Italian culture pretty well, and this may be an easy no, but are there any kind of rituals or traditions or anything that's specific to mob related weddings that maybe you guys did that back then to keep the tradition going or just more consistent with like the Italian or Italian American tradition? How does that kind of pan out? Um, well, I mean, at a, at a regular, typical, you know, a regular Italian wedding, yeah. you know, we all know, um, you know, it's just a typical wedding, but at these type of weddings, the only difference would be is that for the guests that don't have a clue, and that's probably none of them, but if let's say there is a guest there that doesn't have a clue, they're going to be wondering why all those guys sitting together at, at the table with no women. I happened to take somebody because she was friendly with Joe Perna's wife, yeah. but that's why I didn't sit at the table with everybody. I sat at a table um, with guys who brought somebody, but you know, so typically you'll see 
10, 15, 20, 30 guys at a table. And that obviously is, is, is different than most Italian weddings where there'll be couples. Um, you know, I could have sat at that table. They didn't want, you know, the, the, the other person to feel uncomfortable with all the guys around, you know, so they, they, they got me a table and actually we, my table was for a Long Island crew and they were coming with people and they, I forgot what happened, but they couldn't make it. So I had a table to myself that, that night, but everybody kept coming, like during the night, everybody was coming over to talk and sit and, you know, because I was at a table by myself. And, and of course, Joe Perna was sitting with me a lot and I was walking around a lot and the wife was with this person, the, the person I took. So, you know, it, it was pretty typical, but with the exception that, you know, you got a whole bunch of guys at a, at a table. Got it. Now, why don't people why don't people bring their wives and guests just out of curiosity? Um, a lot of times, well, a lot of times you'll go with a crew and you all go together, or use crew up together and go. Um, they knew why I, you know, we were close, uh, uh, Joe Perna and myself, and they 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 knew, uh, you know, obviously I brought and she was friends with with uh, Perna's wife. You you could you could bring somebody, but I've been to events where we didn't bring you know I'd bring nobody and we went all guys. Got it. It, it depends on what you know where you're going and who who it's for. Now um, at the wedding, does everybody got to kind of stop and kiss you know Maddie or shake Maddie and, and Stevie's hand? I or is it the opposite? I greeted. Them. I greeted them. No, I greeted them. I greeted them when as soon as we walked over and we were all walking in together, we were getting out of the cars. Um, um, you know, I look, they're going to come and say hello to everybody. going to say hello to everybody as, you know, as they greet them. So if people are walking in and, you know, they know us or, or, or Maddie or, or, or Bagata, they're going to go over and say hello. It wasn't that there's a line. It was no line of people waiting to say hello. You know, there was no um, scenes, you know, Got it was very normal, very normal. Got it. I've seen too many movies. So we're going to wrap up soon, but one question I do have, and this is might be my Jersey pride speaking. Okay. <laughs> um, the only the God of state. Yeah. Exactly. My only, my, my understanding, the only Jersey born and bred Borgata is the, the Cavacante family. And if you operate in New Jersey, whether you're the KC or any of the other five families operating in New Jersey, how do you coexist with, you know, with the Cavacantes. For example, if somebody does business in another territory, they either got to get approval, they got to, you know, maybe kick up some money, blah, blah, blah. How does the Lucases coexist with the Cavacantes to the best of your knowledge? I, we, well, f first, f first of all, is at, at that time that was, uh, you know, I was part of that Bagata. We did not have to ask another Bagata permission to do anything. And, like and, <laughs> and, um, but, you know, I guess Jersey is cut up in whatever way it is yeah. into their sections and everybody did their, their thing and whatever they, you know, whatever section they had action going on. And so I don't, I don't, it wasn't necessarily that, you know, um, I'll just give you an example that the, the Cavacantes had Newark and we had this. It was, you know, whatever business you're doing, you, you're doing you know and i'm there's more than the lucchese's and the, the cavacantes and you know you, you, the west side is in jersey there's there's a lot of crews out there Interesting. the gambinos had a crew out there there's there's a lot of there's a lot of things going on in jersey <laughs> wow that's cool to hear for being a jersey guy so my last yep. question of the uh of this particular interstitial is um, how strong is the mob presence in Jersey, in your opinion, um, in 20, going into 2021? Where, where do you think they kind of land nowadays? Um, well, I, I'm not out there right now, but I, I, it, it was, yeah, I mean, I would have to say that it was still going strong. And, um, and remember, you know, um, no matter how small the Jersey crew might be you know i don't know what the numbers were but even if it was only you know 
10, 15, 20 guys that are straight down in the crew. It's they're a representation of the Bagada itself. So they're part of the Bagada. So they are strong. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's 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 they're representing um the Bagada in Jersey. They're the Jersey faction. It's just like you know, the Brooklyn faction, the Manhattan faction, Long Island, we we together represented one whole family. So we're as strong as our family was, you know, back then. And I'm sure that they're still going strong to this day. Interesting. Yeah, no, and the reason why I ask, and I say 20, 2020, 2021, it's not, it hasn't been, you know, 20 years since you've been out, obviously, right? No. So I don't know. You know, obviously, maybe arrest people come in and out, but I don't think you know. Hopefully, for their sake, or um, that you know, things haven't materially changed. John, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think so. I think that they are pretty much you know intact. Love it. So, so guys, check out Sit Down News. I'm going to put um, a link below. Um, continue to answer the questions. Uh, John promised we're going to do our best to answer all the questions there has been well over 500 questions sent to us so you got to give us a little bit of um uh, some time on those we wanted to uh bring up this because kind of timely um and john as always welcome to the theory new theory podcast and we look forward to uh our next edition all right tom thank you and thank thank you everybody for your support on the block. <laughs> exactly. And, and uh, John and I have been doing this and we, um, we uh, didn't anticipate being as big as it is. We're just going to keep doing until uh, we do it. So thanks again, John. All right. Take care and stay safe and happy holidays, everybody.